Do you see? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works? And by works was faith made perfect. By works, faith was made matured. Faith was made evident. And faith was made complete. And the scripture was fulfilled, which says, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God, called the friend of God, and was like his friend, God. God is active, he was active. And God is profitable, he was profitable. God is loving, he was loving. God is dependable, he was dependable. And God is faithful, and the man was faithful. You see then how that by works, a man is justified, not by faith only, not by empty faith standing in isolation by itself. Likewise also was not Rehab the Hadot justified by works. When she had received the messengers and sent them out another way, for the body without the spirit is dead. What will they hand do you without the spirit? In a it proves dead. And what will the mouth say? How can the mouth talk without the spirit? And the silent mouth is the evidence that the death has taken place. And the immovable feet, never going anywhere, just stagnant, just dead, is an evidence the spirit is gone out. It says, for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Where there is faith, there'll be accompanying works. Where there is faith, there will be abiding works. Where there is faith, there will be appropriate works. And it is brought out in that line of the song, if you say you are forgiven, if you say you are saved, if you say you have met the Lord and you are connected with the Lord, stop saying, stop professing, prove it by the life you live. There is lively faith, faith that makes you come alive. People did not know you before. You didn't touch anybody's life before. You didn't turn anything around before. You didn't receive anything from heaven before. But now you have faith and we can tell, we can see there's a living, abiding, appropriate faith that brings out works, that brings out fruit, that brings out the expression that leads to the experience. On the other hand, there is dead faith. It's inactive. It does nothing. It makes no change in a man. There's no transformation. There's no difference between the past and the present. Just dead. As a dead man does not move, he does not move. As a dead man does not cry, he does not cry. As a dead man does not laugh, he does not laugh. As a dead man does not do anything and remains in that place, it's helpless. You have to carry him. And there's only one place you can carry him to. You carry him to the grave. So dead faith has no action. Dead faith has no activity and dead faith has no evidence by which we'll know that faith is there. And as you count the population of a country, 
and you don't count the dead men, you do not count dead faith as anything. As you are counting the number of your children, and you don't count those ones who have died, so is dead faith. You cannot count those who have dead faith among the children of God. There's lively faith, there's active faith, there's productive faith, and there is practical, positive, progressive faith. On the other hand, there's an active faith that is totally dead. Dead faith characterizes dead souls. Dead faith characterizes dead backsliders. Dead faith characterizes dead church people, church members. They have nothing to show for the faith they profess. I pray your faith will not be a dead faith. My faith will not be a dead faith. My faith will be active. My faith will be loving. My faith will produce good abiding fruit. Yours will do in Jesus' name. Today we come to the message, the convincing proof of saving faith. The convincing proof of saving faith. There are three things we're looking at as we look at this passage. Number one, the emptiness and deadness of faith without works. The emptiness and the deadness of faith without works. Point number two, the evidence and the discernment of faith through works. The works we do, the deeds we produce, the life we live, the things we give to other people, and the sacrifice we make unto God, the expression of our faith in works, the evidence and discernment of faith through works. Number three, the exploits and the demonstration of faith with works. The exploits and the demonstration of faith with works. Number one, the emptiness and the deadness of faith without works. Come back to James chapter 2, verse 17. Even so, faith, if it has not works, is dead being alone. Look at verse 20. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead, verse 26, for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Faith without works is dead also. And when it says faith without works is dead also, actually, the one who possesses only faith, faith alone, faith alone, faith alone. Faith is the key. And faith is what I have. But there is no works, there are no deeds, there is no fruit, there's no transformation. And the fruit of the Spirit is not there. Obedience to the Word of God is not there. He's saying that man is a dead man. Dead faith, dead follower. I'm following Christ, but he has dead faith. I'm one of the faithful members of the body of Christ, but he has dead faith. The man is dead. Look at the scriptures. I'm looking at... Genesis chapter 20, and I'm reading from verse 3. Genesis chapter 20, verse 3. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night, and said unto him, Behold, thou art but a dead man. 
thou art but a dead man for the woman which thou hast taken for she is a man's wife how many people profess i believe i believe i'm a child of god i have faith in the lord i believe in jesus christ is the son of god i believe in jesus christ he is my personal savior but they have another man's wife with them and you hear the word of god that this is what you do give the woman to her husband no they don't want to do that i believe in god already and my faith in god cancels every activity and cancels obedience abimelech behold thou art but a dead man for the woman which thou hast taken for she is a man's wife we're looking at proverbs chapter 21 proverbs chapter 21 i'm reading from verse 16 proverbs 21 verse 16 the man that wanders out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead there is a congregation in the sight of God. It's the congregation of the dead. Why? But well, they say they follow Christ. They say they believe in Christ. They say it was at a crusade that they raised up their hands and they became believers. It says, but no, he wanders away from the path of understanding. He wanders away from the understanding of Scripture. Whenever you talk about duty, whenever you talk about the fruit of repentance, and whenever you talk about the evidence of salvation, he says, I don't know about that. I don't want to know about that. All I know is I believe in Christ. I have faith in Christ. But he is in the congregation of the dead. He has dead faith we're looking at first timothy chapter five first timothy chapter five and we're reading from verse six first timothy chapter five we're reading from verse six in verse six but she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth she doesn't accept the message of the word of God. He that will be and she that will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. She doesn't accept, he doesn't accept the word of the Lord. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man, if any woman loves the things of the world, the love of the Father is not in him. I believe in God. I don't care about, I can look like the world and drink like the world and I can do everything the world is doing. All I know is, I believe, I believe, I believe in Christ. Dead faith produces a dead man. Dead faith produces a dead woman. And dead faith produces a dead nominal Christian. That faith produces a dead nominal church goer. But she that lives in pleasure is dead while she lives. Revelation chapter 3. In Revelation chapter 3, I read from verse 1. Revelation chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 1. It tells us there from the leaves of Jesus Christ himself and unto the angel of the church in Sadi's right. What a name, what a title, angel. What a position, what a privilege, angel. And what recognition, angel. To the angel of the church in Sadi's right, this thing says he, that has the seven spirits of God, the perfect, complete spirit of God. And the seven stars referring to all the churches, perfect and complete. I know thy works, 
that thou hast a name that thou leavest and art dead. See, it is possible to carry about dead face, the face that does nothing, the face that does only what she was doing before conversion, so called. And the thing she was doing, he was doing before he said, I place my faith in Christ. And the Lord looks at that and he says, I know your works. But we say that faith without works is dead. And this person already has works. And Jesus is saying, Thou hast a name that thou leavest and art dead. And look at Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go to perfection not laying again the foundation of repentance from, tell me, dead works, dead works. There are dead works. They deaden the man himself. And there is nothing that inspires him. is dead. Even the works are dead works. Have you found the people that speak to you, they want to encourage you, but their words bring no encouragement. The words are dead words. They fall flat. They deaden you. They discourage you. You're just there. Have you found the people that, you know, and they try to make up a smile, and they smile at you, but it's plastic, it's dead. It's not coming from the spirit. The soul is detached. The spirit is detached from that smile. Have you found the people that walk? Let's go, let's go, come on, rise up and let's go. And they sluggishly get up and they walk. You are walking, your mind is there, your heart is there, your focus is there, your vision is there. They are walking alongside, their heart is not there, the mind is not there, there's no goal, there's no destination, dead work. There are dead works. And Jesus said, I know your works. What kind of works? so dead it makes you dead even though you claim to be alive hebrews chapter 9 verse 14 hebrews chapter 9 verse 14 how much more shall the blood of christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spots to god purge your conscience from, tell me, dead works. I'm sure you found people who try, but you know, when the faith is dead, every other thing is dead. I don't want people to know that, you know, I'm just a dead log of wood, that I don't have the spirit. And I don't have the joy, the joy of living and the excitement of living for God. And they try, they try to copy the believer. They try to copy the saints, but it doesn't work. It falls down flat. The voice is dead. You're hearing something, but there's no power. And there's no spirit, and there's no inspiration, and there's no enlightenment from what you're hearing. They're just trying to do something, trying to say something. It's dead. And that's why the Lord said that there are people that claim to have faith, but the faith standing alone. The faith by itself does not have the fruit. It is dead because 
it has no works. The emptiness and the deadness of faith without works. We're coming to Isaiah chapter 58. Isaiah chapter 58. I read from verse 2. Isaiah 58, reading from verse 2. Faith without works. I may follow of Jesus Christ. We've heard that for too long. Stop saying, start doing, show that faith. Demonstrate that faith. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 58, verse 1. Cry aloud, spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness as a nation, like a nation. This copycat as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinances of justice. They take the light in approaching to God. And yet it says, cry aloud and lift up your voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgressions. They claim to be saved, but they're still sinners. They claim to have faith, saving faith, but they still have sinful action and sinful lifestyle. Isaiah chapter 29, reading from verse 13. Isaiah 29, verse 13, wherefore the Lord said, for as much, as these people draw near me with their mouth, they say with their mouth, they profess just with their mouth, and with their lips do honor me, but they have removed their hearts far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. You can tell all they have is um, faith that is dead, making a profession, but not having the reality of the life. Jeremiah chapter 8. Jeremiah chapter 8, reading from verse 4. Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 4. It says in verse 4, moreover, thou shalt say unto them, Thus says the Lord, shall they fall and not arise? Shall they turn away and not return? It's talking about people that were saved before, long ago. But eventually, they fell into sin. And maybe the sin is known to other people. Maybe the sin is not known to other people. They just find that on their own, voluntarily, they withdraw from the congregation of the people of God. Where you used to see them, you cannot see them. And when you meet them on the way, you still say, sister, sister. When you meet them on the way, you still say, brother, brother. They carry the name. They lost the nature. They carry the title, but there's no transformation again. It says they are falling and they refuse to rise up. They turn away and they refuse to return. Why then is this people of Jerusalem leading back by perpetual backsliding? They're still at Jerusalem. They're still at the headquarters. But there's perpetual permanent backsliding. They hold fast deceit and they refuse to return. They deceive themselves and they refuse to return. I hearkened and heard, but they speak not aright. 
No man repented of his wickedness. They say, I'm still all right. I'm still in the faith. I still believe. I have only one God. This God is my God. And this Jesus is my Savior. But they have not repented of the weakness they fell into. Saying, what have I done? They have not said that. Everyone turned to his own cause as the horse rushes into the battle. Yea, the stock in the heaven knows appointed times, and the turtle and the crane and the swallow observe the time of their coming. But my people knew not the judgment of the Lord. How do you say? How do you say? We are wise, and the law of the Lord is with us. Lo, certainly in vain made he eat. The pain of the scribe is in vain. Look at verse 12. In verse 12, it says, were they ashamed when they have committed abomination? These people say they have faith. You find them in the offices. You find them in your community. You find them in your neighborhood. They profess faith. And yet when they commit abomination, there's no shame. They're used to it. Nay. They were not at all ashamed. Neither could they blush. Therefore, shall they fall among them that fall. In the time of their visitation, they shall be cast down, says the Lord. Look at their lamentation on the final day, in the final verses of that chapter. In verse 20, the harvest is past. The summer is ended, and we are not sick. They realize too late. Although they have been claiming they had faith, they had faith, no works, no fruit, no deeds, no approval of their lives. The good they want to do, they cannot do. The evil they don't want to do is exactly what they do. Because the faith cannot produce saving works. The harvest is past. The summer is ended. And we are not saved. For the heart of the daughter of my people and my heart. I am black. Astonishment has taken hold of me. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is the health of the daughter of my people not recovered? How do you describe such people? We're looking at 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 5. 2 Timothy chapter 3, and I'm reading from verse 5. It says in verse 5, having a form of godliness, but 